What happened to Noel Devine? So today's video is about Noel Devine. Undersized running back, went to West Virginia, put up great numbers. But when it came to the NFL, he had a rough go at it. Honestly, it was rough for Noel right out the womb. Like literally from the very beginning of the story. And though his NFL career may not have panned out the way that he'd like, looking at where he started and looking at where he is now, his life has definitely been a success. But in this video, we're going to talk about how it started, the ups, the downs, the crazy stories in between, where he is today and how he got there. So if you enjoyed this video, do not forget, click the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're brand new, and don't forget to share the video, man. It helps the channel to grow. Now, I need y'all to do me a favor in the comments section, bro. Let me know who do you guys want to see next in these what happened to video of course there's tons of players that we want to do but i want to make sure i'm getting to the most highly requested ones plus the ones i find the most interesting just want to thank you guys for rocking with the channel my name is film Low raps one So this story begins with tragedy. Noel Devine was born to a set of parents who had both contracted the AIDS virus. Through a miracle, Noel didn't contract the disease, but when he was only three months old, his dad lost his battle with the deadly disease, leaving Noel without his biological father. Noel wouldn't learn that Mark Carter, the man that his mom married after his dad, was not his actual father until Noel was eight years old. But a few years after that, Noel's mom would unfortunately have the same fate as his biological dad. Now this 11 year old kid has lost both of his parents and he even had to deal with his legal guardian having to serve 29 months in jail due to drug trafficking. This man's life was filled with trauma and turmoil pretty much at every turn. When he was 12, Noel started playing Pop Warner football and dude was an immediate star. From the very beginning, he was darting off from all the other kids and the game began to fill a huge void that had been left in Noel's life. As a high school freshman attending Fort Myers High School in Florida, despite his stature, this dude was a man amongst boys. He was bench pressing 315 pounds while only weighing 155 pounds. All right, this is a high school freshman. He moved out of his guardian's home fought a lot, rebelled against authority. Dude just had a lot of anger and pain manifesting itself in different ways. But he was an immediate hit on the football field and was destined for an NFL future if he could only put it all together. But putting it all together was a challenge as Noel continued to deal with tragedy after tragedy. When Noel was 16, his childhood friend was shot and killed. And this triggered a very interesting turn in Noel's life. In July 2005, a 911 call was placed claiming former NFL superstar Deion Sanders was attempting to kidnap Noel Devine. Here's what actually happened. Administrators from the North Fort Myers High School, consequently the same high school that Deion had attended, reached out to Deion about concerns over Noel, wanting to help Deion offer to adopt Noel to give him the best chance to succeed. The scene at Noel's home was a weird one where the dad of one of Noel's friends jumped the gun and called the police saying that Dion was trying to take Noel against his will. Very weird situation, but fortunately, it was all sorted out. Noel did eventually go to live with Dion in Texas, but only stayed for two weeks. See, Noel's daughter was still in Florida, and he had a son who was about to be born, also in Florida. And Noel, desperately wanting to get back home, hopped in Dion's wife's car and drove back to Florida. Didn't tell Dion nothing. Now, he would later regret not just having a conversation and working this thing out, man. 
but ultimately dude just wanted to be there with his kids although that's a very crazy situation Dion and Noel remain close till this day now the media painted Noel to be a problem child and he was a bit of a problem child but as usual they failed to give all the details in an attempt to paint a one-sided story they painted it as if Noel had just rebelled against Dion randomly stole his wife's car and you know was just a kid that was not to be trusted but as you can see there was a little bit more to the story than that after an amazing high school career and playing in the U.S. Army All-American game, Noel was the number three ranked running back in the nation. He was recruited to Alabama, Florida State, but ultimately decided to attend West Virginia. Now this was following the early success of Pat White and Steve Slayton. I say early success because they were still there when Noel got there in 07. But when Steve Slayton went down in the Fiesta Bowl, Noel stepped in and gained 105 yards, two touchdowns on only 12 carries. After the departure of Steve Slayton, Noel rushed for 1,300 yards during his sophomore season. As a junior, he nearly rushed for 1,500 and also scored 13 touchdowns. But as a senior, Noel actually had his worst season from a yards per carry standpoint and his second worst season from a total yard standpoint. Now, this was due to an ankle injury that plagued Noel throughout his senior season at the NFL Combine. I mean, this thing dragged on. And obviously something like that could be a huge problem for any player, but especially a player who relies on speed and elusiveness. Now, despite that, Noel obviously had a very successful college career, gaining over 5,000 yards. But scouts weren't high on him, and he was only projected as a seventh round pick. It didn't help that he was unable to show off his best assets at the NFL Combine, which was his mobility due to an ankle injury. He did, however, put up 24 reps on the bench press despite only weighing about 160 pounds. He later ran at his pro day, but he was still injured and only put up a 4640, which was not seen as a fast enough time to make up for his lack of size. Scout said he was too small and too injury prone, and teams just didn't have a whole lot of interest. They named many reasons, but we kind of know how the league work, and I can guarantee you that if Steve Slayton, who'd gone to the NFL a few years earlier, would have been a bit more successful, Noel's draft stock would have been higher. Instead, he went undrafted. Now, during July 2011, Noel attended a funeral of a childhood friend who had been shot multiple times. Later that same day, he was signed as a free agent by the Philadelphia Eagles. Unfortunately, his head just wasn't in football and four days after arriving at Eagles camp, he would make a mistake that would haunt him for the rest of his life. He just up and left Eagles camp. This is the second time we've seen this. Noel was dealing with something emotionally, having just lost his friend, and instead of speaking to somebody and trying to work through it, he ends up just up and leaving. Same thing he did at Dion's crib. Of course, as he gets older and matured, he can look back on these things and recognize that this repeat behavior is a big issue for him. Now, pretty much nobody knew why he left. Again, it was kind of out of the blue. So the media made up a story saying that he failed the drug test and started circulating that around exact same things they do today just like when people didn't know why malcolm butler got benched they just started making up stuff and despite there being no proof of this there are people watching this video who still believe all that stuff about malcolm butler i can guarantee it same thing in this situation instead of the media just admitting that yo we don't know why he left here's our theory they don't paint it as a theory they painted as fat. You gotta make that distinction in those situations. But anyway, Noel psychologically just could not cope with the loss. My theory is, after those early tragedies in his life, losing his dad, losing his mom, having his guardian go to prison, seeing his friend get shot down, now having another friend die due to being shot, it's like he reached a tipping point. I'm assuming that he'd never gone to therapy to work out these issues, and this stuff resurfaces, man. We generally just bury it and keep it moving, but it'll come back up. And this one came up at the worst possible time. Noel would never get another NFL opportunity, but he would get a chance to play in the CFL. But when he got there, he had focus issues and injury issues 
that constantly plagued him. In 2016, Noel returned to West Virginia to complete his degree and worked out with Stedman Bailey, a guy who's currently attempting an NFL comeback following a gunshot to the head. Check out my video on him if you haven't seen it, but Noel has also been participating in the Spring League, which is the same developmental league that Johnny Manziel is set to participate in this year. So he's finishing his degree, taking care of his family, and gonna give football another go in the Spring League. And in a nutshell, that's what happened to Noel Devine. Yeah, you'll never know quitter Cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go again